welcome back. Uh, now we're going to make this uh, this whole model a little bit more interesting by taking into account the delay we talked about in the first video. And the delay, if you look at this stock and flow diagram, is that houses do not just appear. They take time to be built. And in our model, we have one year is the building uh, time. Once you start a house, then you finish a house. Uh, but in reality, it could be, could be much longer. So the way to handle that kind of time delay in a stock and flow model uh, of this sort is to do a work in progress uh, notion. So that you start building a house and during that year the house is basically a house work in progress and there's a stock of those. So these are houses being built essentially but not yet finished. And then um, those become another stock which is a stock of finished houses. And basically that's the way you handle the delay is almost a chain of stocks. In our case just just a two chain. A house in progress once you start it and then a finished house as a second uh, stock. That should be adequate for our uh, model. So let me draw that for you. Essentially the rest of this is okay. You have a goal, you have a gap to the goal, and that drives builders to build. Okay. Once they start building, it doesn't become a house. It becomes a house work in progress, WIP. Okay? So that's, that's what builders are doing. They're starting houses, and it becomes that stock. And then basically, after 12 months, they are completing the houses. So a house will move from a work in progress house to a finished house. Okay? So this is your stock of finished houses. Okay? So essentially all we've done is added one stock in the middle for the work in progress bucket, and then we've finished houses. So let's do a little rewiring of the rest of the model. The gap is really identified from the number of finished houses relative to the population. Okay, so that's the way the gap uh, that's the way the gap works. So we got 1,000 houses, finished houses. We have 9,000 people that want it. The gap is sorry, 10,000 people, families that want it. The gap is 9,000. So that's that's where the gap is uh, comes from. Uh, this is the same, so builders have a goal of closing this gap, whatever it is, within three months. That's their level of aggressive, aggressiveness. And then the completion time is 12 months. And the way you do time is just like this, this one. So you have um, so completion time is 12 months. So kind of once you're, once you're up and running, you're going to complete one twelfth of this inventory of the work in progress each month. Okay. So again, it's the stock divided by the time is the amount you're going to complete in that unit time. Okay. So that's the way system dynamics generally models uh, models things like. Uh, things like that. You have your kind of average time. The average time from starting to finishing a house is 12 months. And you take the amount of stuff that's in that bucket, the house is work in progress. You divide by that average time in 12 in this case. So 1 12th will be completed per, uh, per month. So that's, uh, that's the way we typically model it. So that, uh, oh, and then the last thing I added in the model, just to make things interesting, was a decay rate, basically, that houses would only last every uh, uh, three years. So, okay, essentially finished houses will decay. Basically, so they cease to become houses, which creates a need again. Um, and uh, the average lifetime is three years, so we'll do 36 months is the average lifetime. 
And again, the same kind of formulation. We're going to take the stock divided by the 36 months, and that'll give how many are decaying per month. So again, if, if houses last 36 months, if you turn that around, 1 36th of those houses are going to decay each month. Okay? And mathematically, that is, uh, that is equivalent. It might sound funny, but that's been proven to be uh, equivalent. So you have a time constant in all these cases. 36 months, the average lifetime of a house. 12 months, the average time to build a house from start to finish. And three months, the average time the builder is intending to close the gap, the building industry. And you're taking each of these stocks, basically, or, or gap in this case, each of these variables and dividing by that time to figure out what happens on a monthly basis because this model has a rhythm of, uh, of a month. Okay, so that is the stock and flow diagram. Hopefully that's not uh, too confusing because we've added a few elements, uh, elements to it. Now let's, uh, let's enhance our model um, to use this particular stock and flow diagram now and we'll see how um, how this changes as the system tries to uh, reach 10,000 houses. Okay?